Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today um, on our first MND Queensland educational webinar. Um, my name's Sandra. For those who may not know me, I'm an advisor with MND Queensland and also a support coordinator. So I have clients across Queensland, have been here for quite a while. So again, thank you so much for joining us. As I've said, this session is being recorded so that people um, in our community, if they're not available, they can watch at a later stage. So if you're not wanting to be recorded, please turn your cameras off now. Um, if you can also turn your speakers on mute, so therefore there's no feedback for um, Gethin. So I'd actually like to introduce Dr. Gethin Thomas, and I'm, we we're actually quite privileged to have Gethin with us today. So Gethin, as I've said in the email, is the Executive Direc Director of MND Research Australia. Gethin will be updating us on research and trials that are happening within Australia. And at the end of the session, we'll open it up for any questions. If we don't have time to answer your questions, you all have my email address, which would have been attached to the invite. Gethin said that he's very happy to answer any questions if we don't have time after the fact and get back to you as needed. So thank you so, so much, Gethin, for um, giving us your time today. It's so, so greatly appreciated. And I'll hand across to you. All right, uh, thank you, Sandra. Uh, can anyone, everyone hear me okay, hopefully? And um, look, I'd just like to say thank you to Sandra and to MD Queensland for inviting me to speak to you today. I didn't realise it was the first one of these educational webinars, so uh, hopefully I won't set the bar too low for the future <laughs> webinars. But um, um, yeah, it's always great to be able to talk um, to the wider community about our research. So um, I'm really appreciative of this opportunity today. So as Sandra said, I'm just going to sort of run you through a bit of background on what we do and research um, uh, currently. Uh, the other, um, you may have some que other questions perhaps about research for uh, abroad. I'll try and answer those at the end if you do have some specific questions. Um, but uh, today's will be uh, my focus is on um, Australian research. So um, MND Research Australia, uh, as you may well know, we're the research arm of uh, MND Australia. And um, we were established way back in 1984, actually. We were actually established before MND Australia um, when there was, it was still had these completely separate state uh, um, associations in. Um, uh, and uh, we amalgamated with MND Australia in 2010. Um, just see how this, my slides are advancing very slowly. Ah, that's it, cool, right. So the research challenges we, we sort of set out um, for MND Australia, and these are probably the same for any um, organisation like ourselves around the world, they're pretty established research questions that we want to answer. It's first, of up, first up to better understand the cause and the underlying bi biology contributing to MND, basically what causes it. Um, and the second thing that we do, um, we don't do very well at the moment, is how can we better measure both disease progression and responses to treatment. This is a, a, a real key feature we want to get better at. Um, obviously, we want to develop and test new treatments. And while we're developing these treatments, we still need to enhance the clinical and healthcare research to make sure the care we're providing is the best possible care and any uh, possible advances are incorporated into our uh, clinical and healthcare practice. Um, so we support research, MD Australia supports research across a, a, an incredibly broad range of areas, actually right along the research pipeline. So um, right from very, very basic research, looking at molecules and cells right through to developing uh, better care models. So just a few of the things we've looked at, uh, we've uh, funded and uh, helped support before, say environmental factors, genetics, as I said, healthcare research, 
uh, the role of immunology, how your in, immune system's involved, uh, metabol metabolism and nutrition, muscles, um, again, social research, so things like community care, um, better diagnosis, uh, biomarkers are really critical in how we measure the disease. I said cell biology um, and obviously things like drug development and the disease models we can test those drugs in, so be it cells or, or mice or animals. Um, so how is research funded in Australia at the moment? So obviously there's us, MND, RA, and I'm sure you're all aware that Fight MND are uh, a bit of a juggernaut on the uh, research funding scheme. They've done a brilliant job of tapping into you know, the AFL and the um, uh, great links through to Channel 9, I think Channel 7, and they're raising uh, huge sums of money. And look, and we're um, working, uh, we work with Fight MND these days, and I think it's really critical we do that to make sure, one, we're not sort of uh, sort of uh, copying each other and uh, duplicating the work and also how we can actually uh, complement each other and um, work out how we can make sure that the funds we do raise have the, the uh, most benefit. Um, m and me are based in Queensland, I'm sure you're aware of them, and they also raise funds for research and most of their research funds actually come through us. So we again uh, partner with m and me on the research side. Racing for Mindy, they're a small organisation based over in um, WA, and they raise funds for genetic research into uh, MND. And then uh, we also have government funding as well. The uh, National Health and Medical Research Council, NHMRC, um, fund uh, research projects right across the, the board. They have about, oh, I think it's close to a billion dollars a year, but that's for all types of medical research. Unfortunately, only a very small proportion of that goes to MND research, and that's something we, we really would like to change. The Medical Research Future Fund, the MRFF, is something that was set up a few years ago. This is aimed at more translational research, so really sort of a more late stage, and they uh, we've had a few projects funded through the MRFF, but again, um, we're hopeful to, to, to talk to government and keep boosting funding towards MND through these, and, and occasionally we get some money from the Department of Health as well. That's more focused on the um, sort of care provision side of, uh, of research. Um, there's a couple of joint initiatives I'd like to tell you about today. Uh, the first is uh, uh, MindOz and also something um, that we've established called the, the M&D Collective. Um, so really these both are intended to really boost our uh, sort of national research um, efforts and really again get that better bang for our research buck and to make sure that the research coming out of Australia is the best possible and um, and is, is really um, sort of uh, um, competitive on the, uh, the international stage. So um, the m and Collective is a joint initiative between us and Fight m and And the idea is it brings all facets of Australia and actually um, New Zealand uh, research together. And the idea is we're building a platform to really encourage collaboration and resource sharing. So um, uh, you, you sometimes see with um, in um, research generally that the same lab, different labs around the country or different um, um, different groups will be doing very similar research and perhaps they, they see each other as competitors more than collaborators. So the idea of the collective is we, we're trying to break that mould and make sure everyone knows what everyone else is doing in research around the country and instead of going, oh, they're competing with us, going, well, why don't we get together and we both we work together, we share our resources. So in perhaps in preclinical, this could be different. Um, there's lots of different mouse models of MND which represent the disease in different ways. So instead of sort of uh, doing the studies in your own lab, why don't you just send the drug you want to test to another lab to do it? Um, on the clinical care side, um, there's lots of very small sort of care, healthcare focused projects going on around the country. A lot of them we don't know about. They're, they're, they're really sort of almost internal in these institutions. So a big thing there is we're trying to do a, a big audit of all the MND research happening around the country. We're going to put it into a big database so everyone else knows what everyone else is doing. You know who to contact. And if you want to go, OK, I'm really interested in this research, you can check if anyone else is doing it and go and talk to them first and say, hey, can we can we um, work together on this? And 
by boosting that, that really boosts the research output. That is really critical these days to making sure your research can have a, a real impact is, 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 is size. Size does count in research. You need either numbers of people involved in you, if it's a clinical trial, if it's um, in the lab, you need to test uh, your um, your drugs, your treatments as many different ways as possible to really prove that it, it has a good chance of working when we take it into the clinic. Another way where this helps is biobanks. So there's lots of sort of groups around the country that have collected samples from patients from um, um, and they're kind of a bit separate. So again, we want to make sure that everyone um, has access to everyone else's samples. So they, again, you, if you need to, to um, sample a certain, um, say a predictor or a test a biomarker, you can have many more samples to test that on. And the statistical analysis is much stronger. So you get a much better chance of getting a, a true yes or no answer if that's, if your hypothesis or your idea works. And that's really what we want to do in, in research. It's um, all research is about asking a research question. Basically, it's like, will this work? Can we change this? Um, and what you really want is a definitive answer. Even if that answer is no and you were wrong, you need to know that. You don't want to. You, the worst thing you can do from a, a research study is to get, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's right. So by make, helping people to work together, by boosting the, the resources and the numbers involved, it really increases our chance of that. Yes, it works. No, it was a bad idea. Move on to the next idea because that's what it lets you do. Even if it's a no, you can then move, take your resources, your, your brains, your skills to move on to the next resource instead of keep trying to answer a question you're not sure about. Um, as I said, this minimizes duplication siloing with the collective. And a really key aspect of the collective is the lived experience voice is core to everything on this. Well, this all spun out of a summit we had back in, 19, in 2020. And uh, we had a number of people with MND or carers, ex-carers there, family members. And it really said, look, we really want to be involved in, in, in the research. We want to help you ask the questions you want to know. Um, to make sure that the um, yeah the, the questions you answer are re relevant to us, and um, this is what we've now got. We've got a board, a, a management board for the collective. Uh, um, there's equal numbers of uh, people with um, lived experience as there are researchers on that board, and we're um, just putting together a lived experience um, uh, panel to help um, provide further advice to to the collective. Um, what the collective is really focused on, uh, we, we came out of that summit with three core ambitions. First is to accelerate discoveries and treatments towards a cure for MND. Second, to improve the standard of care and the experience of people living with MND through research and education. And the third is to enable this collective approach to transform the system. Certainly number three is well on the way. And both, um, We've had examples in both these two as well. There was a million dollar grant has just been awarded to a group looking at uh, identifying treatments and they've all come out of the collective. Similarly, there's a, a, a large care grant as well that's gone through to um, to MindOz, which is which is part of the collective as well. So we really feel that the collective is starting to transform the MND um, uh, environment or the uh, ecosystem within Australia. Um, Mind of the Mindless Partnership, you may have heard of this. This is brought together the Australian MND uh, uh, registry, the patient registry, and the sporadic ALS Australian Systems Genomics Consortium, which is a complete mouthful, but uh, SULSA is a much better acronym. So basically, this is the patient registry where we um, um, collect information about all the patients in Australia with MND. And then we also have tied that then to this um, uh, salsa, which is basically a genetics study. So um, it allows us to collect samples um, from patients and try and identify what are the genes, what are the genetic changes that may be contributing to the disease. Um, this is initially funded through an NHMRC partnership grant. Uh, um, and basically what it, it, the idea is we want to collect clinical data, genetic data, biosamples uh, for the genetics. Um, 
and it, what it does do, it allows both the clinic, when you attend your clinic, you can, they can enter the data, but there's also an interface so the patients themselves you, um, can enter their data into this um, into this database, so you can update it as often, often as you like. And there's also going to be a portal uh, which is currently being developed to allow carer data collection as well. And we, are, we all understand what um, it can be. Um, um, it's really important to look after the carers, to care for the carers. And so with the more information we can have about this, the better. And this has all been built onto a purpose-built web-based portal. So it's really easy for both the clinics and the patients to um, um, enter their data into this. So if you, um, it'll be on my last slide, but if you haven't heard of MindOS or registered for this, please do look it up. Uh, just, you can just Google MindOS and it'll be there and you can register or talk to your, um, next time you go into your, your clinic to see your uh, neurologist, talk to them about it as well. And they can uh, hopefully, I think most of the clinics in Australia are now enrolled in MindOS and are collecting data at the clinic level and but you can even if you're not doing it through your clinic uh, you can enroll yourself and enter patient your, your own data what are the benefits of such uh, an approach um better clinical trial access for a start um basically um uh if you're in the database you can we can easily identify who is um eligible for certain clinical trials and either let you know um about that. Also, it allows, um, it's more attractive to the pharmaceutical companies to come to Australia. If they know we have a, a large resource where all the patient uh, data is, is is held, they we can actually tell them, okay, if you want to run this trial, we have approximately X number of patients that could uh, potentially enrol in this trial. And this really helps them. They really like this. Um, this data also allows us to um, help contribute to healthcare policy. Data is critical to really provide useful healthcare policy, and uh, MindOS is set up to do exactly that. And also, it empowers um, patient management of disease. Um, you can follow uh, what's happening, your progression, a lot easier. Your data is right there in front of you. You can get a, a printout anytime you want that says this is what's happening. Um, it allows you to keep a track of all your treatments, your um, any. Uh, 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 drugs you take in, any your your uh, clinic appointments, etc. It just provides that um, resource for you to be able to to really see uh, what's happening with your own care. And involved in this, the partners, it is truly a national partnership. All the state associations are involved, the clinics across Australia. Obviously, we're involved, MND Australia and MND Research Australia. Fight MND also help fund it. Uh, where is MND and me? And there's a number of uh, researchers right across the breadth of clinical genetics researchers and healthcare social science. So it's going to be a fantastic um, initiative. And um, um, what we need now is as many uh, people around the country to be involved in it and enrolled. Um, so now more on to the nitty gritty of the, the actual research that's happening in Australia. So um, I've split it into two broad fields. So um, basically preclinical research, so this is the stuff that's happening in the labs, and then the clinical research, which is obviously, as you say, is involving uh, neurologists and clinics. So um, nationally, there's a, a number of really uh, uh, great platforms. So down at the Flory Institute, Brad, Brad Turner and Chris By have this uh, drug screening platform here. They're basically taking neurons, they've grown neurons in culture from patients, and they're testing a whole swathe of drugs, both new drugs and drugs that have possibly been um, uh, being used in other conditions such as Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis and basically testing these drugs to see if we think they'll work in MND. Um, uh, in uh, Flinders University in South Australia, Mary Louise Rogers has the Ian Davis Flinders University biomarker facility. They are collecting lots of uh, samples from around the country, mostly blood samples, to try and identify um, better ways of, of following the disease, as I mentioned earlier. So basically a biomarker is just a, a marker you can measure in your uh, bodily fluids, be it uh, blood, urine, even your CSF, that allows us to see is, how is your disease tracking? Is it getting worse? Is it getting better? Is it going up or down? And we really lack this uh, reliable biomarkers in um, MND at the moment. We have some biomarkers that tell us 
about neurodegeneration, but they're not specific to MND. So there's a, a lot of work going on in Australia and around the world to try and identify better, better ways of measuring disease. Um, there's another biobank as well at uh, Macquarie University run by Ian Blair, Julie Atkin and Dominic Rowe, who's a neurologist there. And they've been running this for quite a while now. So this goes beyond just biomarkers. They, they are looking for samples to, um, uh, they have a very extensive sample of all um, different sort of tissues, cells and uh, uh, blood samples from patients. And, and they use this for a lot of genetic studies as well to identify what genetics are contrib contributing to, um, to MND. In, um, in Wollongong, uh, Justin Yerbury, uh, Professor Justin Yerbury runs a lab down there. Um, you may have heard of Justin. He himself has MND. Um, he was a professional basketball player until um, a few years ago when um, he realised that um, he had MND. He retrained as a, as a scientist and now he's one of the most successful researchers in Australia. He's a, a brilliant guy. Um, and he looks at um, uh, here we've got the, the technical name is uh, proteostasis, but it's how all the, as you may be aware, that uh, one of the aspects that um, kills uh, motor neurons is the accumulation of protein clumps in the cells. We don't know why this happens, you get this build up of proteins such as TDP43. So he's looking about why this happens and how different interventions that possibly could prevent this. Um, in Tasmania, we have a, a group run by Anna King and Tracy Dixon and Kathy Blizzard and Tony Cook who look at the cell biology of MND. So it's really looking at what happens to your motor neurons, why are they um, um, degenerating, why are they dying? And you may be aware of such as uh, excitotoxicity so that your motor neurons are overactive and this kills the cells. Um, and so they're looking at uh, why this happens and, and what you can do to prevent that. They're also looking at disease heterogeneity. As you're probably aware, every patient is different. Some people progress slowly, some um, more quickly. And why is this? And why do people get, um, does it present in different parts of your body, et cetera? So they're looking at trying to work out, is there a sort of molecular or cellular basis for this? So they're um, really delving into that down in Tasmania. Um, but there's also some fantastic research happening in Queensland, closer to home. Um, University of Queensland is actually a real hotbed of, um, of uh, MND research. Um, you may well know Shu and Derek. They run a lab at, um, uh, at uh, Queensland and they're looking at metabolic exploration. So, um, you know, as you know, um, weight loss is a real issue. Your, um, your metabolic rate seems to increase um, when you um, develop MND and they're trying to work out why that is. And they've actually got a clinical trial at the moment testing a drug in there, which I'll talk about a bit later. But they're um, a fantastic lab and so they do base research based in the lab as well as clinical research. Um, there's the program in complex trait genomics based at the Institute of Molecular Biosciences, which is again is at UQ. This is run by Fleur Garten and Alan McRae. They run a, the MND part of this larger program. And that's a huge genomics group who are really world standard genomics researchers. And uh, as part of their studies, they look into MND and they, they're key aspects of the Salsa genomic platform, which is part of uh, MindOS. Um, Adam Walker at uh, University of Queensland looks at neurodegeneration, the, the whole biology underlying the degeneration of your nerve cells. Um, Pat McComb and Rob Henderson are over at uh, Hurston at the uh, Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital. They're neurologists, you may well uh, know them, um, that as well as um, obviously doing clinical trials. They also do uh, run lab studies as well, looking at the role of the immune system um, again, another researcher based at QIMR, which is over at the Hurston facility, the Queensland Institute of Medical Research, or the, I think it's the Berghofer uh, Queensland Institute of Medical Research these days. Um, Anthony White looks again at neurodegeneration over there and um, again, what's contributing to your cells. And he looks at the interaction of um, the immune system as well in, in driving uh, neurodegeneration. And then, um, Neuroinflammation, so inflammation in your nerve cells is a definite contributor to, um, to uh, motor neuron um, death. 
and Trent Woodruff and John Lee, um, uh, based it over at the uh, St. Lucia UQ campus, are looking into the different um, parts of your immune system that contribute to neuroinflammation, and also they tested some um, some treatments as well, which again, one of these we'll talk about when I talk about clinical trials. Okay, so looking at the wider picture again, so I'm going back out to uh, Australian research in general, looking at the clinical care side of it. I've already talked to you about Mindos. Um, there's another a number of other groups around the country doing important research in clinical care. So um, David Berdowitz down at the Austin in Melbourne is one of the uh, world leading experts in non-invasive ventilation. And he's run a whole number of clinical trials down there and studies one of which is running at the moment, working out exactly how you can dose the um, non-invasive ventilation to make it uh, more effective. So it was basically using really advanced um, uh, AI type approaches to work out how you can exactly dose NIV to individual, to, for individual patients. Um, Susan Mathers down at Calvary Care Bethlehem in, in Melbourne as well has been looking at medical literacy, uh, health literacy. You know how easy is it to understand the information you you um, um, you receive and how to negotiate how well you you can negotiate the healthcare services. Um, Anne Hogden, who was at the University of Tasmania but now is based at UNSW, University of New South Wales, has built these uh, patient decision um, support um, programs, which basically uh, really give give you all the choices to make in really critical decisions such as getting a PEG or a tracheostomy, NIV, etc., to really help people step through that decision making process. These are really critical decisions. Um, Samar Oon over at Perrin, the Perrin Institute in Perth, who is, um, is also the current um, Western Australian of the Year and just missed out on being Australian of the Year, though we, we don't actually get the scores to unfortunately to see um, how close she actually was. but. Um, Fortunately, she wasn't selected as Australian of the Year, but she is the Western Australian of the Year. And she runs a program called Compassionate Communities, which is really about um, involved in a sort of palliative care area and really bringing the community into providing um, quality care at the, um, at, at the end of life. And uh, uh, she's doing a fantastic job in building this, this program, which is now uh, moving out of WA across, um, across Australia. Um, again, what's happening in Queensland in the, uh, the sort of care research space? I, again, I mentioned um, Shu, uh, Shu and Derek's um, lab at Queensland. As I said, they do look into the metabolics, metabolic changes in disease, both at cell level, but they also do this in patients. They run clinical trials and have a number of uh, patient studies as well. We've just funded uh, Brooke Mai Whelan, who's a um, speech pathologist for her Save Our Speech study, which is aimed at to better predict the rate and pattern of speech loss in MND, so we can um, devise better um, systems to preserve speech as long as possible and identify when um, people need to consider things like voice banking, etc. Um, previously, we funded Gail Robinson again at UQ to look at the um, longitudinal assessment, uh, so behaviour and cognition in, in, AO, in AOS MND. So, um, you know, are, are there other um, uh, uh, aspects of um, behavioural change and reduced cognition as disease develops? Um, as part of the collective as well, there's also um, a, a node at UQ. We have state nodes of the collective and they've established the MND um, FTD collective at UQ. And all the researchers I've mentioned previously, um, both care focused and um, Lab-based are, are networked together now based with Collective at UQ and have regular meetings where they get together and share information. So the Collective, as well as allowing researchers in the same areas to work together, the idea is it allows researchers right across the breadth. So the clinical researchers are aware of um, what's happening in the preclinical space, what potential treatments are coming through, and also it allows the basic researchers to uh, understand some of the really key clinical questions that they should be looking to answer. So again, that works really well to um, to bring people together. Oh, I'm going a bit slowly here, so I'm skipping a bit. Um, 
Um, so clinical trials in Australia, I'm going to talk about some of the clinical trials that are running. Um, there are challenges in Australia. Obviously, we are, are a lot smaller than, say, Europe or the US, so we only have a small patient population. Um, we don't have big drug companies are not all, or, or even small companies are not always based in Australia. And we do have that tyranny of distance. You know, we're a long way from the rest of the world and we're a long way from each other when we're in Australia. So that can make running clinical trials more difficult. What are the opportunities though? Again, we have this well-connected clinical network. All our clinics talk to each other. They're all, um, they all know, know each other. MindOz is further building that, that network across Australia. Obviously, uh, clinical care in Australia is of a high standard, and we have research funders such as ourselves and Fight M D who are, are pretty collaborative, and, and we're always looking how we can help um, move um, drugs uh, through the system. And we have this very strong research community to generate candidate treatments. I can tell you now that the Australian research community, M D, it really bats above its weight. We're a small country, but our researchers, many of them are, are truly world standard and have a uh, really high world standing. Um, a couple of trials now, I'll just take you through some of the trials that are running. So Focus C9 has actually just finished recruiting patients. So they're uh, just assessing the waiting uh, for the drugs. This is a, a drug to treat, um, as a genetic therapy that specifically targets the C9 or 72 um, a form of MND. So if you're carrying that mutation, you would have been eligible for this trial. And that's a six month trial that um, uh, it's a phase one, two trial. So the outcomes are basically safety and drug targeting with it. Well, I'll take a bit of a look at how long it works as well. And they were recruiting through um, Rob Henderson at the Wesley and also at Macquarie and over in Perth. Um, Lighthouse 2 trial has just started. This is um, a trial that tests an antiviral therapy. There are high levels of a, a virus in patients, and this drug was actually originally used for patients with HIV. Um, but um, there was a phase uh, 2 trial that showed really promising results. So it's just starting the phase 3 now. Uh, the primary outcome is survival. It's, it's a long trial, um, up to two years. Um, and it has quite broad inclusion criteria. So we're hoping to, they're hoping to recruit as many patients as possible into this. And this is running nationally. And Rob Henderson based in Brisbane is recruiting um, through the RBA, RBWH. Um, uh, Metflex, this is a trial that Shu and Derek are running um, uh, through Rob Henderson is actually running the recruitment. So this is determining uh, the, the um, ability of a drug called trimetazidine um, and basically um, is hoping to slow down that hypermetabolism in, in uh, patients with MD to, to reduce that weight loss and that whole the high, really high energy, um, energy usage. Open label trial, no placebo. Um, so basically they compare you to before you started the trial. 16 week trial and really at the moment is to assess safety and they're using what are called oxidative stress markers to see if it is shifting your metabolism at all. So that's a trial that's actually based, uh, that's just running in Queensland. Um, uh, Rokanase inhibitor, the real trial, it's a phase two trial that is basically looking at this oral Rokanase inhibitor, it's an oral drug, Bravel, and it's thought that this drug may uh, in, inhibit the uh, neurodegenerative uh, processes and perhaps even the, the uh, neurons recover. Um, a 24 week trial, uh, again, open label, no placebo. So you're, you're guaranteed the drug if you go into the trial. Uh, Rob is recruiting for this through the RBWH and it's also being run in Melbourne. Just like to say, all this information is available on our website on our clinical trial page for more information or also give you contact details. Um, um, uh, this uh, study is a phase one going on for oral uh, monopantel. This is a, um, a drug that's supposed to help with the buildup of um, protein clumps in your neurons that contributes to their death. So um, this is supposed to increase your cells ability to basically break down these cell clumps and uh, get rid of them, which appears to be um, that that whole system is a normal system. 
which functions at, um, in normal neurons, but it seems to break down in MND. So they're seeing this drug will um, will affect this. Um, it's only a, a phase one, so it's really trying to work out uh, is the toxicity of the, or safety of the drug and also what dose works best. So when you say a series of 20 day escalating dose periods, basically they give the successive patients higher doses of the drug to see um, how well it's tolerated. Um, um, this has been run at Macquarie and down in Melbourne at the Bethlehem. I don't think it's been uh, recruited for in uh, Brisbane at the moment. Um, as a cannabis trial or can can cannabinoid trial that's going on at the Gold Coast, um, and Sabat is still running that. This is definitely happening. Um, basically seeing if uh, oral cannabis extracts can help in slowing the disease progress progression. They're also looking at pain as well as um, sort of stiffness as well, as well as the, uh, the actual disease progression. So that's the trial that they're, they're recruiting for down at the Gold Coast. Um, this is a trial that's just started. Um, uh, this has been um, started by uh, uh, a researcher down at the Flory Institute, Brad Turner, and they're testing, a, a, it's actually a cough medicine, Ambroxol, as a, a treatment in MND. So even though it's used as a, 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 a cough suppressant, one of its other uh, effects of the drug is it restores lipid metabolism, so your cholesterol balance. And that's thought to be disrupted in MND, and it may help to uh, preserve your motor neurons. So that's just started. It's a phase two trial. This is, we know it's a pretty safe drug. It's, it's already been approved for obviously other uses. So this is happening uh, again. I'm not sure if it's happening, if they're recruiting in Queensland yet, that may not come on board, but um, it is being uh, recruited for in other, um, uh, other cities around Australia. So it may be worth talking to your neurologist if, uh, if they can get you into this trial if you're interested. Um, this is the drug that's actually come out of um, Trent Woodruff's lab in um, in Queensland, uh, AMX uh, or PMX205, um, and it basically this is the drug he, from his neuroinflammation work. So this uh, reduces the inflammation, it attacks him, uh, doesn't attack the immune system. Um, it tries to prevent the immune system attacking the brain. So it's using uh, targets the complement system, which is a key aspect of the immune system. Are sought to be involved in your information. Um, this is just a phase one trial again. They're really working about sort of how the drug, drug behaves in your body, but they will be looking um, uh, how a little bit on how it um, uh, can uh, affect your disease progression. Um, again, Rob Henderson is running this out of the Wesley Hospital, I think, in, um, in Brisbane. Um, one more trial that should be starting pretty soon is uh, lithium carbonate. So this was tested a few years ago and the trial results were um, were negative. But when they went back, they identified that certain patients carrying an UNC13A mutation actually did respond to the um, to the treatment positively. So now they're running a second trial uh, for MND funding this or funding part of it anyway um, to um, basically specifically re recruit patients uh, who have this mutation, this UNC13A mutation, and then they receive lithium carbonate. So we're, we're quite um, we're very interested to see how this is kind of tar specifically targeting subsets of people with MND and hopefully um, will respond better to the drug. So it may be our first kind of decent biological marker we have. Um, so you may be aware if uh, anyone is involved with people with this carrying the sort of one mutation, Tofacin is a drug that was trialed, trialed finished last year, and uh, the drug is still available to anyone carrying the sort one mutation um, as a compassionate access program as well. Um, it's currently being um, considered by the FDA in the US for approval, so we're waiting to hear about that in March. So everyone's keenly watching that space. Um, also, um, as I said, this drug is currently available to, to patients at the moment if you are confirmed and, um, with MND and you're carrying that mutation, you can obtain the drug uh, for free from, um, from Biogen. Um, there's, they're also running a really unique trial as well, which is the first ever preventative trial in MND. So they're identifying uh, people who carry the SOD1 mutation, basically who perhaps have a family history, 
And if you do that, you can enter into this trial and they follow um, patients who carry this mutation and they're measuring a marker called uh, NFL, um, neurofilament light. And if the levels of this um, marker go up, you, you then enroll into the trial and you either receive the placebo or the drug. And they then follow you for um, um, uh, a longer period. And then um, and if your disease continues to progress, then if even if you're on placebo, you get switched to the drug. So um, it's designed obviously to have minimal harm, but this is the first time the idea is that by identifying perhaps the very early stages of the disease with the increase in this NFL marker, and they give you a treatment very early on before you're confirmed as having MND, can it really slow the onset or the progression of the disease? And this is, as I said, the first time this has been done. So um, if you do have a family history uh, or know that you carry the sort one mutation, then I'd certainly um, recommend getting in touch with, um, with your neurologist to consider enrolling for this trial. Um, so what does happen after the trials? We've got all these clinical trials happening. How do we get drugs actually to, to, um, to the MND community? So in Australia, uh, the, the drugs have to be approved by the government by the, uh, there's a two stage process. Two drug agencies, the Therapeutic uh, Goods um, Agency and the uh, PB, PBAC, the um, Pharmaceutical Benefits. Um, so um, a key thing to this is that when a, 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 a drug needs to be approved, it has to be, the uh, that application has to be done by the pharma company. It has to have a sponsor, and almost invariably that is the drug company. It's a fee-based process and it requires obviously huge amounts of information. So um, even though we'd love to be able to, to boost, to bring drugs to Australia, there has to be the companies that do that. This process is being under, under review by the government. The whole tech, technology assessment, health technology assessment process, HTA, is currently under review. So there's, as I said, there's two stages. First of all, the Therapeutic Goods Agency looks at it and they basically approve the drug to whether they think it will work. It's purely focused on the safety. One, it's not going to hurt you. Two, will it work? They don't worry about the cost of the drug. And the one unfortunate thing about this process is no opportunity for patient advocacy. It's basically just done on the data provided to them by the drug company. And you can either get full approval or sometimes they give you provisional approval is basically we, we will follow those people receiving the drug and see how it goes. Um, the second stage of this, as I'm sure you're aware, is the payback. So that's where, okay, who's going to pay for this drug? Are they going to, is the government going to subsidise it? And um, it comes to cost benefit analysis. And this can run in parallel. And the benefit of the payback is there is uh, opportunity for patient advocacy. But one of the, um, the review, part of this review, this health technology review, we've we've argued very strongly, and so have a lot of other um, patient advocacy organisations, that there should be um, patient advocacy in the first stage. It's not just about safety and efficacy. Uh, efficacy of a drug in one patient population is very different in another population, such as a drug that improves survival by six months in arthritis, perhaps is not uh, a big deal. Obviously, in MND, that is a big deal and it should be considered very differently. So this is the argument, where, um, this is the, the discussion that's happening at the moment. So this is what's going on. So uh, you may well have heard, and I'm happy to discuss this a bit later, about drugs being approved overseas, but we have to um, have, get these companies to come to Australia first. And um, uh, like I said, that's a discussion we can have. And where can you get more information? My last slide. Um, uh, we have the MND Australia clinical trial pages. We try and keep them updated as much as we can. Follow us on Facebook. Uh, I have a Twitter feed, which I try and put as many interesting research updates in there as possible, LinkedIn as well. Um, six monthly, we have our advanced newsletter. Um, about 10 times a year, we run our state of play webinars. We're just planning one for March now, for the first of the year. Um, that just gets our, our researchers to come and talk to you about the research they're doing. Last year, for the first time, we ran the Clinical Research Learning Institute. That was a, a two day workshop where we basically um, give um, people in the MED community a real grounding in research. 
you know, what questions should you ask? What should you look at when you're looking at things on the, the internet? How can you help advocate for for research for drug treatments, etc.? It, it went really well. We will be running another one this year. Um, overseas, you've got ALS Entangled is a brilliant re website in the states which talks about different therapies, different treatments, and also untested treatments that you may read about. Go and have, if you ever read about a treatment you're not sure about, go on ALS Entangled and take a look and see if it's there. They'll give you a real um, um, warts and all review of anything and a real um, expert uh, opinion of whether it's worth pursuing. The Alliance um, uh, Scientific Advisory Council, we have briefing notes on recent um, treatment updates, drug trial outcomes, etc. Um, and um, coming soon, forthcoming, I'll be publishing a monthly uh, research update which will just give a bit of an overview of what's going on in the research world, what's kind of caught my eye. I can't promise you it'll be a massively comprehensive overview, but it'll certainly be what I think is interesting. So um, and I try and keep a pretty good um, eye on what's happening out in the rest of the world. So sorry, I've sort of rambled on for a quite a long time there, but uh, I think that's a bit of an overview of where we're sitting in uh, the Australian research, Australian MD research at the moment. So please fire any questions. Thank you so so much, Gethin. Um, I've learned a lot, and I really appreciate. Um, you updating it, Ron, there's quite a few hands going up. So Ian and Ian Bateman and Marie Young, would you like to unmute yourselves? I've muted everybody. So and ask Gethin while we have some time because we're getting close to our time limit. Yep, I'll be quick. I did a um, new nerve trial. Through Royal Brisbane. Um, but what I've found is that most of the trials are for people who've been diagnosed for um, two years or less. So once you pass that criteria, there's really nothing much available. And for my specific gene, which is the SOD1, um, it was known as 113, but I think it's changed its name somewhat. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot available. Do you have any comments in relation to that? Yeah, uh, regarding the um, the two year sort of cutoff, that is very common. I think um, I think uh, the reason for that is clinical trials. Again, it's going back to that yes no answer that I think I was talking I talked about earlier. It's Drug companies obviously um, want to get an answer of whether, whether this works or not. I think the idea is if they target people early on in the disease, you can see more of an effect. I think as people get beyond that two year mark, they feel that the disease becomes um, a little more difficult to, to shift and therefore um, they, um, they're they basically um, um, saying that we have more of a chance of seeing a result. It doesn't mean the drugs when they become available, they won't be restricted to people within two years, but the idea is to get that question and as quickly as possible and the patient population perhaps be a little more homogenous, a little more similar and it's easier to see, to see the effects basically. I mean, if something comes down to money, obviously clinical trials are hugely expensive and they basically want to make the trials, um, keep the trials uh, as small as they can with assuring they get an answer. Um, regarding the SOD1, the Tofacin is the drug that will, is has currently being developed specifically for SOD1. And uh, as I said, you can apply for the um, um, uh, the access to the um, to the treatment. There's information on the clinical trials page about that. The exact link you have to go to. Again, it has to be done through your neurologist. There are a number of other treatments out there that are targeting the SOD1 gene. They just haven't come to clinical trial yet. Um, that are at very early stages, same sort of approach, trying to knock down the activity of the gene or the protein from that gene. So I think they, they may be coming into phase one, but not in Australia, but else overseas, I think there are treatments being tested. So there are definitely, um, it's definitely a, um, a, an approach being adopted. 
Excellent. Thanks, Gethin. We might, you. Ian, would you like to um, ask your question in Bateman? <laughs> so I think you might be still on mute. Yeah, yeah, yes. So if you just open up your mic, Ian. Yep. Can you do it from your end, Sandra? I'm trying, but it's not actually. Um, it's not working, unfortunately. OK, so we'll go to another question. Ian, if you wanted to email me, we can sort of um, follow up with Gethin regarding your question. So the next person no, is Bill. You can Bill. pop in the chat as well if you like. Yes, Bill White. Yeah, hi. Um, I was diagnosed with MND about 10 years ago. Uh, more recently, I've been told it's actually uh, progressive muscular atrophy, which is a form of MND. Uh, I've now found my son, who is 49, is showing similar symptoms to what I did at his age. He's had a genetic test. I'm about to have a genetic test through the Gold Coast Hospital. I'm just wondering what progress has been made as far as any connection genetically. Oh, should they, um, sorry, it was sorry, it was SMA you said you identified with or PMA. Sorry, I, I missed the first word. Uh, sorry, progressive muscular atrophy. Yeah, okay, PMA. Okay. Um, oh, right, uh, sorry. And uh, 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 there's also SMA, oh, so uh, which, which has been a very there's a very strong genetic link with that, um, but that affects some um, people at a much younger age. Um, I, to tell you the truth, I, I don't know if there's a strong genetic link in PMA. PMA. Um, it sounds like they're, if, they're, if they're genetically testing, there may well be. Uh, I don't know exactly. I'll take that question on notice and come back to you if that's all right. Yeah, that would be good if you can, because it's yeah, no, really I'm, important. I'll be having a genetic blood tests in about a week. I've got my car in the panel leaders, so I've got to wait for the car to come back. Yep, no, certainly. Look, um, it's something I, I obviously need to know more about as well, so I'm happy to go away, have a look, and come back to you with some information about that. Good. Thanks. So if you drop your email through to uh, Sandra, then she can pass it on to me and I can get back to you. Yep, that'd be great. You've got my okay. email address, Bill, from the invitation sent yeah, out today. Excellent. It's on the invitation. Okay, yeah, it's fine. on the invitation. Um, All right. Thank you. We might actually, because we're getting very, very close to I think, I think the Mark, end of our time. I think Mark might have a question. He's waving. OK, Mark. Yes. Yes. Um, just a couple of things I want to mention. One, I'm taking, I think it's called Rizorol. Or Rizorol. Um, Rizorol, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a horrible yeah, so I was recommended that by PA Hospital Neurologist. So I've been taking that for a few months now. I haven't noticed any progression, which is good. Um, but also I went to the Mater Hospital and spoke and spoke to a neurologist there. And he's hoping to ring me and ask me questions about my progress and everything for research. So uh, Looks like I'm involved a little bit in it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Mark. We might actually, because we've only got a couple minutes left um, and we are recording. So if any of you have any questions, you have my email address. Um, if you want to send me an email, I'm very happy to forward to Gethin. Um, we've also discussed prior to this meeting that we may invite, well, we will invite um, Dr. Thomas back for an update, maybe in the second half of the year as well. I think the information that's been shared is um, amazing. As as Dr. Thomas said, what Queensland, what Queensland, but also what Australia is doing in their MND space as far as research and trials is 
is the most I've ever seen um, in the period of time that I've been involved with MND. So it's it's wonderful, wonderful outcome, and it's so beneficial for our community across Queensland. So thank you so much, Gethin, for actually being present. And thank you everyone for coming on board to have a listen to Gethin. As I said, um, I haven't said previously, but I have a, quite a few clients that are involved in the trials that you've mentioned in Queensland. So um, again, it's it's up to you guys to, to make the difference make and the it's difference. you that um, are needed to participate in these trials. So as Dr. Thomas said, it really is worthwhile talking to your neurologist to see if you can actually get involved. But um, again, thank you. I'm going to stop the recording, stop now. The recording now. Yep.